Welcome to tonight's community preservation meeting held here at City Council Hearing Room 1 Government Center, Fall River. Uh, meeting is going to be live and through Zoom. Uh, today is Monday the 26th, 2022, 6 o'clock. Um, we're going to start out with roll call first. Uh, we'll do in-house first here. Um, hold on. First, let me read the meet, uh, open meeting law. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and deemed acknowledged and permissible. We'll start with roll call. Alex? Alexander Silva, present. John Brandt, present. Richard Calderon, present. And then I will uh, call off your name on the uh, Zoom and you can just say present. Uh, Chris Oliveira? Present, attending remotely by Zoom. By Zoom, uh, Caroline? Burn and I'll be present, attending remotely by Zoom. Uh, Jason Byrne by Zoom? I'm here on Zoom. Uh, Victor Ferris by Zoom? Victor Ferris by Zoom. Okay. Virtual. And we're missing uh, uh, John Ferrer on vacation. And we're missing a, um, a mayoral appointee. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll start off with the first project. Uh, Almax Diner. Citizen input. No. Oh, any citizen input? No. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, can I have approval of the minutes from August 18th, 2022? I'll make a motion. Okay. So. I'll second the motion. Okay, roll call vote. Yes. Yes, yes. Alex Silva, yes. Uh, Chris? Yeah, Chris Cantara Oliveira, yes. Caroline? Yes. Yeah. Jason? Yes. Vic? Yes. Okay, now on the eligibility hearings. Just getting ahead of myself here. Um, is anybody here for Almax Diners? We're gonna, it's it's a new agenda. It's uh, the Fall River School administration is going to go first. I don't have that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then it falls in line after that. Oh, okay. Yep. So they're going to go first. Yeah. All right. railing on patio west side of the building and the other one was um window replacement okay yep all righty we got uh we'll uh, start with the uh let's see the patio uh for uh, city school department we have a project uh, railing on patio um west side of building and uh that's under historic preservation. Um, can you tell us a little about the project, Kenny? Sure. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Kenny. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Could you just introduce okay. yourself, sure. too? Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, we have a, um, a patio. Uh, it's the length of the building on the west side of, of, uh, of the building facing Rock Street that is in desperate need of, of repair. We, um, we had consultants look at that piece of uh, work and uh, 
some will, some of the products will fail and, and some of it isn't. So uh, we're looking to uh, enlist uh, Diamond Oak to help us out in reproducing some of the work um, so that we can uh, keep the integrity of that particular look uh, in place. Um, we're going to do uh, some of that uh, work ourselves, um, which is the share, the uh, $10,000 share, um, and asking the committee for uh, $60,000 to do the project. All right. Does the board have any questions? Just yes. raise your hands. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Ken. Um, so the $60,000, um, is that just, just for material? Because you said... Uh, Volk, the Volk kids are going to help out? So, so Volk is going to help out. Um, I'm not quite sure at this particular time uh, whether or not they will be installing um, or whether um, we will be hiring a subcontractor um, to do that work for us. Um, but we feel that um, whichever way we need to go, um, we will be able to uh, finish the project for that dollar amount. No, that no, it's great because I mean, if you if the vote kids did it, I mean, obviously the the cost will reduce because you don't have to hire a subcontractor. Exactly. Um, will they? Um, when will they give you confirmation if they will be able to participate in this project or not? Is there a timeline? Um, yeah, they basically um, we we gave a sample. We took one spindle out, gave them a sample. They're gonna um, see what luck they have um, turning that. You know, piece and uh, what material will work best for us, um, which which uh, uh, would would work best on that particular uh, spindle, and then you know, obviously uh, most of that will be fabricated also uh, to match what's there. So I'm hoping that um, within the next 30 days we'll have an answer from them, and if not, then we will um, pursue uh, a mill uh, shop. A couple in the city that uh, may be able to take on this board. Okay. Any other questions? Well, this does meet the uh, historic preservation. Can I have a motion to move it on? I'll make a motion to move the Fall River School uh, Department's administration project for the railing forward. Yeah, I'll make a second. It's just if you can just get back to us, Kenny, and just let us know if they'll participate. Obviously, you know, because the funding amount will be able to be reduced at that set point in time. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. I uh, will uh, vote on that. Uh, Christine? Yes. Oh, yes. Caroline? Yeah. Uh, Jason? Yes. Vic? Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes? Yes. So that yes. passes on to the funding round. Uh, you're up next to Kenny. Uh, for uh, window replacements, uh, for the ad building. Uh, and could, could you just introduce yourself for the public, too? Yes, so uh, my name is Ken Pacheco, the Chief Operating Officer for the And that's under uh, a store. Uh, yes. Can you tell us a little about that project, Kenny? Sure, sure. So, uh, there's 78 windows in the building um, of various sizes. The window, um, the windows are in um, they, uh, they round and roll uh, with every little breeze in the building. Um, but um, we, we have found some um, some companies who are willing to work with us to preserve the look and integrity of um, what we're trying to achieve uh, on the outside of the building and also on the inside. Um, it is, um, we're actually going to do a pilot, um, hopefully before the, um, the February timeframe um, and have, um, we can invite the board to, to take a look at that um, to see if that meets the needs um, of what we're looking for. And we're hoping that the company can manufacture that window um, so that we can install it in the building and uh, we'll finish it um, both inside and outside. And it'll also give us a, a better um, 
quantity, uh, quality, and uh, price on uh, what we can look be looking at to uh, get this installed and uh, manufactured. So the, we, the windows, as, as I'm sure other people have, have uh, told the board, uh, the windows are anywhere from uh, 17 to 25 weeks um, to arrive. Um, we're fast tracking one window um, to see if we can get one in installed uh, so that we will have some accurate numbers. Um, we do, the budget that you have there is, um, was part of uh, the study um, that we did um, with the uh, funds from uh, last year's, or maybe probably the year before last, um, grant from uh, CPC. And where um, we also had uh, the remainder of funds uh, still available from what the school department and the um, the CPC allotted to uh, do a second um, study on uh, the windows. So we did a, a uh, existing conditions, and we also did a study on the windows to see where we could go um, uh, with um, that project. It's it's a it's a pretty big undertaking on the, on the uh, labor side. Um, it's very labor intensive. Uh, the, the windows, uh, there are five different sizes of windows um, and that may, may um, in itself be um, a little um, difficult on the timing of when they're gonna come in, but we, we've decided as a district is we're going to make sure that we order all the windows at one time um, and then we will install depending on um, the severity and do it in that kind of uh, order. Okay. Yeah, if you could get a, uh, um, a sample of the window, make sure it's uh, state and carrier secretary standards, that'd be great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, does the board have any questions? Mr. Pacheco, um, so who's ordering the windows? Is it going to be the contractor or is it the school department going to just? We're, we're going to do the ordering and we'll hire a labor contractor. Oh, okay. Um, so it'll be like a 30 v one. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And so are you guys going to put out the construction part of it out to bid? We will. Okay. This first, this first sample window, we'll hire a contractor, a local contractor, to put it in, time and material. That'll also give us an idea of just what we're looking at for installation right. overall. And um, that'll help us in, in our final number. Um, okay, so I know you guys have a, you're working with an architectural company, RGB? Yes. Um, so they couldn't, they couldn't provide like a, some kind of forecast number or is it because it's just you looking at the different types of windows you guys are looking to install? I know there's a, a back order of windows, so it's, we're looking at what, six, six months, six, eight months, yeah. right? The window, the window number um, has been estimated at between 140 and 180,000. Okay. The door of the windows, um, and then we're assuming a certain dollar amount um, for the ins for the installation. Right. So you guys are probably looking at, I want to say probably like spring, to maybe get this done. Well. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board? Just raise your hand if you do. I just have two questions. Um, so is the intent to make all of the windows uh, historically accurate? I just want to make sure that's clear. Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the, it will be, um, which was the direction that the architect was given, given um, when we started the project uh, to be sure that the, the exterior of the building matches exactly what you see today, only a little less peeling paint and rattling and in the interior um, being uh, a match to the uh, to the interior so that that is the goal um, with the in, with the entire project okay thank you and then the last question is just I, I was just wondering what uh, rationale you had for having these two projects separate um, I could guess but I just was wondering what your actual uh, intent or reason was well part of it is um, from the beginning we were hoping that the diamond um, piece would work uh, as a former uh, teacher at Diamond for 17 years. I um, you know the capabilities. Um, I also know the time constraints um, that the school has, and, and um, I would I would think that running the two projects separate 
for that reason, number one. The second one is I know that um, that time frame on the windows um, would put us um, a, another full year. So if, if the board did, did go along with the project, the funding process, the uh, procurement process would take us um, well past the season. And we would be installing, you know, some of these as long as, as they came in um, with, with whatever season we could. Um, the building um, is flexible as far as when we can change windows, we can close rooms off, contractors could work inside, um, and, and we could still be occupying the rest of the building. Um, so I think that the, the, uh, the separation just lets us have a closure on one project um, and um, move move along with the other. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, it does fall under historic preservation. Uh, can I have a motion to move the project on? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to move it forward. Second. I'll second that motion. All right. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Christine. Yes. Caroline. Yes. Uh, Jason. Yes. Uh, Vic? Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes. Richard, yes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pacheco. Thank you, Dr. Mendoza. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Pacheco. Next is Almax Diner under historic preservation. Uh, they're looking for booths, seating, metal entry doors, replace repairs to the uh, neon sign, equipment building cooler. Uh, they're looking for fifty thousand. Is anybody here? I know on this one, it's. Uh, uh, did we get a letter from the landlord stating that uh, get permission? The only thing that I haven't looked in your packet. Isn't it the owner submitting it? Well, he, he rents it. He doesn't own it. No. Um, so he's missing that. And then I know we can't uh, fund uh, the booths inside or the, uh, the entry door. Anything that has been redone over the years is not eligible under CPC. I mean, a neon sign might fall under because it is a landmark. Um, does the board have any questions, <clears throat> any comments on that? I was just also going to say that uh, the outdoor, the exterior uh, requests could fall under historic preservation, but I, I wasn't so sure about the booth seating, uh, equipment replacement, if that was interior and walk-in cooler, at least. Yeah. Um, but how do we know if the seating were preserved? Seating has been changed over the years. Well, it has to be exterior, too, for yeah. the public, because it's a private property. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, historic preservation generally has to be exterior-facing for public benefit. Okay. Thank you. I mean, we could put this under historic preservation if he gets us the letter uh, from the land, uh, his land landlord. Uh, but like I say, I, the only thing I could see it could possibly is the neon sign and the, the door, if it's original. What's the board think? Kristen? So I think, um, I, I agree with you. I think the only thing that, ap that definitely would qualify is the sign. Um, the doors, I think we would have to know if that's original to the building or not. Um, and then really, we really can't do anything anyway until we have uh, a sign off by the by the landlord. I mean, in those two, for at least the historic, um, at least the the sign, the neon sign, it would qualify under historic preservation. So, but I mean, in order to be considered for funding, at this, I mean, as far as this, it, it's eligible, but. Be considered for funding, we can't do anything until we have the landlord's approval. Well, if we did move him on to the next round, he would have to conclude that in his package right. with the right. estimates for everything else. Right. Um, so, do we just want to make a motion to move on to uh, 
historic preservation, just a neon sign. I mean, the doors might qualify as well. It just depends on whether or not they're original. Um, so we need, I mean, we really would need more information on this. Right. Okay. So how about we include the uh, neon sign and the door if it is original? Okay. Motion on that? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Second? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Chris? Yes. Caroline? Yes. Jason? Yes. Vic? Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes? Rich, yes. Okay. So that's just going to be on the, the door and the neon. Yeah. And pending a letter from the landlord. Right. Yep. Next is the academic club. This counts. No, it's Dr. Dr. Oh, Dr. Fisk. Oh, Dr. Fisk. Yep. How can I forget my good buddy? Let me see here. I'm a member of the board of directors, so I'll be recusing myself from this. Okay. So the Dr. Fisk House uh, is a historic preservation. Uh, they're looking to do the east and west side facet, windows, storms, and shutters. They're looking for $79,200. Uh, looks like uh, we've done work on this previous, uh, 25 windows. Um, Jim, would you like to tell us a little about sure. Um, hi everyone. Uh, hello? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Jim Sohn, we're president of the Preservation Society of Florida. We're a nonprofit organization. Uh, we've been very fortunate to get several uh, grants from this committee, which is awesome. Um, we're hoping that this is the last one that we're going to be coming to you for. Uh, we're really uh, hmm. we're trying to focus on just the exterior now, the exterior facade that faces the uh, street. Um, as you know, all our work is uh, based on the Secretary of Standards, and we work uh, also with the um, uh, preservation guidelines that uh, we're working with the Historic Commission to adopt. But uh, um, so all of our work is uh, to that standard. Okay. So this should uh, actually wrap up your project because, I mean, it's looking really, really good. The place looks great. And yeah. uh, this will be one last uh, kick to, to make the place look look great, but also to secure it. Uh, it'll repair the original windows, so we're not actually re re replacing windows in this house, um, and uh, adding storms. Uh, on the front of the house, we use historical storms. On the side of this house, it won't be historical storms. It'll be uh, low reveal, so that they're... Um, or energy efficient and appropriate okay. to the house. All right. Does the board have any questions? Can I have a motion to move this on to the uh, historic preservation for seventy-nine thousand two hundred dollars? I make a motion to uh, move it forward. Uh, second. For historic preservation. Okay. I second. All right. Roll call vote. Chris. Yes. Caroline. Yes. Jason? Yes. Uh, Vic? Yes. Uh, John, yes? Rich, yes. <coughs> All right. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Jim. We'll see you later on in the year. Next is uh, the Academica. Uh, is, can you come up? Um, I don't want to say that last name wrong, probably. Uh, it's Manjun Nagpal. Nagpal, okay. Yeah. Just the way it sounds. <laughs> Alrighty. So you're looking for an elevator on yes. South Main Street, uh -huh. uh, 350000 Right. Uh, we just acquired the building, and okay. we've been approved to have 11 market rate apartments and the lounge in the basement. So <clears throat> the elevators will be helpful for, like, you know, elderly and stuff. 
because the lounge is situated in the basement. We could put a staircase, yes, but uh, this kitchen was also used by the fair, like the Kings County Fair. So we're trying to get it back to the community where they could be able to use the kitchen and people who have been attached to these kind of building could come back. I'm most, you know, we're trying to get the members back, give it back the way it was, you yeah. know, to preserve the idea of uh, the academica the way it has been for years in Fall River, instead of like just putting some apartments and forget about the way it right. was. So the elevator would serve the apartments you're putting in? Apartments and the like lounge in the basement. Okay, so really not historic preservation. You're looking for community housing. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, because historic preservation, it wouldn't qualify. Uh, right. No, it was like approved uh, with the last owners and because the project went south. Yeah. So, and uh, it has been like, you know, the labor cost and material cost has considerably gone up. So, uh, requesting on the same basis that had approved before, if it's possible. Now, do you have like plans for the apartments and all yes. that? that yeah, we already presented it to the variance committee and, you know, uh, city planning and everything. Okay. Because you'd, you know. you'd have to submit that to here for yes. us to but vote yeah, on it. The company Civitech was designing it. I reached out to them. Okay. They are saying they are like booked. So I would, in the mean, in the meantime, I will have some other engineers to, you know, okay. revitalize the same project that was there before. All right. So yeah, you'd be going under community housing, not the preservation. Yes. So. And are you, so if it's under community housing, it has to have uh, a deed restriction for affordable housing yes, for, for some of the years. units. Yes. So, so you're aware that yes. you'd have to have some affordable units because right. I know you said 11 market rate, but 11 market rate, yeah. is is one of those going to be? We are uh, talking to the Fall River, like you know, it's in not I think third floor or fifth floor, with them. Mike Dion. Dion. Okay. Yeah. So is the plan to convert some of those 11 units into affordable, or are there going to be additional units that are affordable no, beyond that? No, some of the, uh, from the 11 units. Will be affordable? Okay. Yeah. Not all the 11, but some of them, yes. Yeah. yeah. So what, can you define some? Is it two? Is it three? We so Right now we have one, two. Two? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, hmm. uh, any other questions from the board? that this has to be uh, refiled under community housing, okay. not yeah. historic preservation for the next no. for the next round. Okay. Yeah. Um, Already. So can I have a motion to uh, uh, for community housing three hundred and fifty thousand for an elevator for the academica? I'll make a motion that it qualifies under community housing um, or an elevator. Second. Yeah, I'll second. Okay, uh, roll call vote, Christine? Kristen, yes. Kristen, yes. <laughs> uh, Caroline? Yes. Jason? Yes. Vic? Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes. Rich, yes. Okay. All right, yeah, just uh, if you're working with Mike Dion, because uh, you've got to make sure you have that separated, okay. the deed restriction and all that, because uh, housing has not been one thing we've been, it just creates a lot of headaches for us. So uh, this is, it looks like a good project, right. we'll, we'll consider we, it, but right. you've got your work cut out. <laughs> yeah, we are like in almost um, in up to $3 million in improvements okay. from our side. All right. So this would be actually helpful, like, you know, mostly the uh, lounge part of it, where, you know, people could come back and enjoy the place the way it was before. Well, it's a good area for community housing, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, best of luck on it. So Thank you. We'll see you later on. Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next is St. John's Baptist. Or is anyone here? And you're looking for doors, windows, stairs, foundation, railing, cupola, steeple, stained glass, ramp, uh, Bathroom, ceiling, electrical, Center Street you're located on? Yes, we're on uh, Center Street and South Beach Street. And all that for 58000 Okay. Uh, you I hope so. Little, <laughs> want um, to tell us a little about your project? So, um, yeah, we, what we, we're, we're trying to, uh, to uh, preserve the, the building and, uh, and its appearance on the outside. Um, it basically needs a lot of painting, um, a lot of caulking on the windows. Um, 
the, the, the brick stairway needs to get repointed. Um, we also would like to replace uh, the big, uh, there's a big stained glass window over the front door. We'd like to re replace that because that's um, uh, fallen apart. It's a wooden, our concern there is that it's a wooden frame. And so we, I think in order to meet the, um, uh, the, the, um, the guidelines, we're going to have to re replace that with, a, with, a, with an, another wooden framed window. Uh, but it's it's a very simple window itself, just big big panes of glass in it. Um, mm -hmm. So it, the the whole project is really just sort of keep the building um, um, in I'll say in in one piece. And uh, it, it's kind of a, I think a unique building for Fall River um, in, in terms of its design uh, and also just its age and and uh, for, it's 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 a re representation of the Ukrainian community in in Fall River. Now, who's going to be doing your work? Could you just introduce yourself? I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, my, my name's Ihor e Slobicki, and I'm a, oh. a, a trustee at uh, St. John the Baptist Church. Thank you. So who's going to be doing the work for you? Um, we haven't gotten anybody yet. We, we're still, I guess we're, you know, once the, we, we get the grant, we can start looking for uh, um, so, uh, contractors. Okay. Um, but it's it's probably going to be, I think it's going to be, it looks like the job will be really too one is painting, which is going to and kind of involve everything. The other one is probably going to be brickwork, and so I think it's going to break up break apart into two sort of smaller projects. Oh, so two but phases. Okay. Um, hopefully, it, it'll work. I guess in the third one will actually be the window itself. So, so maybe it'll be three projects altogether. Because okay. in this project, we could only do outside because That's right. it has to be open to the public. And right. Obviously. Uh, we are interested in keeping uh, history going, uh, but they would uh, whoever you hire would have to follow secretary standards to make right. sure everything is right. way. We we are, we're in the process of of um, um, looking at an, an architect. Uh, so we talked to uh, two of them, and, and um, we haven't gotten any um, agreement with them yet. But we talked to two two of them. Um, the names escaping. One is a uh, is uh, actually a professor at Roger Williams at the architecture school. And the other one is um, in Fall River, uh, sorry, in Westport. Um, I forget the name. It's I have it on email. So I'm sorry, but it, um, they are they're uh, they're two of the architects that we talked so far, and um, hopefully we'll add, we'll get one more, so to at least get some idea of what the cost will be for for them to do that, and then uh, start um, go, going after the work itself. Okay. Yeah. Cause, well, if you hire an uh, uh, an architect that's going to eat into your money so right. it might be something that uh, you get an architect and you start with the stairway and uh, redo that this year I mean there's ways of you know because uh, 58 doesn't take long to go through so. well, I know <laughs> We're, but, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably low on that but yeah. it's I know it's a good estimate I think but okay uh, does the board have any questions yeah I don't know. so my question, I guess, was, so, I mean, you haven't hired an architect, which is understandable, but where did you get, like, where did you get 58000 then that you would, you would need? Um, did you still um, I, I, just, just taking a, um, some good guesses of what work, I mean, we had some work done, like some years back, we had a, a roof done and, and, and things like that, and then thinking, well, what, what are um, uh, different companies charging? So it's sort of a... An estimate, but we not, I didn't get a chance to really talk with anybody specifically, saying, "Well, c how much would it co cost to do to do these this work?" And you know, specify each item yet. Right. So, so for now, it's it's really just an um, our best estimate uh, of what right. it would take. Yeah, because I mean, you know, few years, you know, from pricing for a roof, few years is a lot different than I know. today. I, I, uh, you know, so I mean, you know. It's, it, you know, just respectfully, I think you would be doing yourself a disservice um, if, if you didn't hire a professional. And the reason is because, like, an architecture will be able to kind of forecast, you know, um, exactly, like, um, you know, how much you would need for this project. And then if it has to be um, broken out into phases, then it can be broken out into phases. But at least, you know, would it'll be like the, the, the ground, you know, core foundation for you to be able to kind of say, okay, you come back to the committee. Okay, you know we got a, you know we got an architect. This is the total cost. We're going to do it in in phases, as I'm sure. You know, I mean, I'm new to this committee, but I'm sure that 
there's been, you know, with Dr. Fishhouse, I mean, I've historically I've seen, you know, we've definitely funded a lot, a lot of the projects. So right. I think it'll be cumbersome for you guys to do that. It just, you know, yeah. professionally just saying. So. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it'll go a lot easier for you if you get an, you know, somebody to guide you through it. Cause that, that, that's that, that's what you, we're looking for. When you for, get man. into historic preservation, the Secretary of State standards, I mean, it's yep. it'll be tricky. You don't. Yeah. Wanna, and then if it's not done right. We don't pay, so. <laughs> I, I know. I think most of. I think the biggest new thing I think is is, is doing that that stained glass window. The everything else is, we're not really changing anything or adding or subtracting. We're trying to leave everything as is, but maintain it, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's the the window. I mean, it, it really does need uh, work, and I think that's going to be our biggest uh, probably yeah. our biggest project. And that may in fact be, uh, you know, we may do. I'll say the, the easy stuff first, you know, do the brickwork and maybe some of the outside painting and then do, do the stained glass window as a separate project. But we'd have to see yeah. uh, what, how that works out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, we've, we've had people, the Dr. Fisk House has uh, been in front of us three or four years. You know, they, they do mm -hmm. different things, you know, one side, the other side. Right. So, I mean, uh, yeah, so maybe that's something you want to look at. Okay. Thank uh, you. Any other questions from the board? I do. Good. Chris? Um, just just a, a couple of questions. The the outside of the building itself, I know the trim around the windows and around the door is wood. Is the rest of the is the rest of the building wood? Are those wood slats? Um it's uh, vinyl siding. I okay. think vinyl siding so yeah, the rest of it is vinyl siding. Mm. Okay. So we're not we're not taking that off or leaving it on. Um, I believe underneath that is wood, but that vinyl siding has been on there since as long as I've been going, which is probably like mid-1970s was when I started, uh, when I became a parishioner there. So that, that's been on from before that. So, uh, yeah. But I think just the, around the windows it's still uh, w wooden trim, so a lot of that paint is, is peeling and now. And just um, my other my other thing is more of a comment just to both you and as well as any of the other projects that are here for historic preservation you will need to get a letter of recommendation from the historical commission prior to submitting your application if if you're um, eligible then prior to submitting the application for funding you will need to go before the historical commission and get a letter of support from them as well Okay, thank you. Now, Chris, being that it's a uh, aluminum siding, vinyl. I think it's vinyl. 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 Does that still fall? Um, uh, that's a tough one. Um, that's a tough one because the vinyl siding is on there, but I mean, if you're repairing part of the building and you're setting it to Secretary of Interior standards, and then you're leaving vinyl siding on the building. I don't. That's going to have to be a Stewart question, to be honest, because I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that's ever come up. Anybody that's ever gone for historic preservation, it's the outside of the building still been intact without vinyl siding. So, um, I mean, in in theory, the the project qualifies. Um, for what they want to do, but I don't know if the vinyl siding on the building is going to make a difference if they would have to remove that, especially because um, if the rest of it has to be Secretary of Interior standards, I know the vinyl siding really wouldn't be. Yeah, and on the vinyl siding, we, we can't pay to have it removed, so that would be yeah. on your end. Uh, as far as I know, the work has to meet Secretary of Interior standards. So if you're not adding any vinyl and you're actually preserving the remaining features, I think it might be worth. Qual I think it might qualify, but mm -hmm. it's still worth asking Stuart. Right. Um, yeah. Stuart is our representative from the CPC Coalition, just so the public is aware who we're talking about. Um, and I did just have a 
couple comments on uh, the just some of the eligibility aspects of the project. Um, under historic preservation, I don't think the ramp for the downstairs rear door would qualify or the bathroom grab bars or, as John mentioned, the interior church ceiling. Um, I would also want to ask about reattaching the electrical utility wire, but th th there might be some wiggle room for that because it's on the exterior. Um, that being said, it might reduce your project scope a little bit and give you more wiggle room in your budget if you didn't pursue the architect as was discussed. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? I don't think it's a good project. So do we want to make a motion to move this on to historic preservation for the next round for fifty-eight thousand? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second. <clears throat> I'll make a sec I'll second the motion. Okay, roll call vote. Chris? Yes. Caroline? Yes. Jason? Yes. Victor? Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes? Rich, yes. And uh, I'll, I'll make a call to Stuart, and if there's, for some reason there's a problem, I'll let you know before you get too far in. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. You know. Th thanks for a lot of the good tips and, and advice. <laughs> no problem. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Have a great day, guys. Okay, next is Watapa Rowing Club. Is anyone here? Hello. Could you just introduce yourself, too? Sure. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. My name is Kim Smith. I'm a board member of the Watapa Rowing Center, lifelong resident of Fall River and the executive director of the United Way. I don't know if you need to know that, but full disclosure, <laughs> it's my role. <laughs> All right. So you're looking for 200,000 for docks and lane and marking system. Correct. Um, now, your club, is it open to the general public? It is. So it's anybody can use the... Yes, we are a 501c3 nonprofit, and we are um, a rowing facility that avails rowing to student athletes for free. Uh, we have so far raised all of our funds to provide those services to our student athletes ourselves through grants and donations and uh, private funding. We have a master's program that is a revenue driver, so Masters doesn't mean you're an expert, it just means you're old. I learned that the hard way. So after you age out of college rowing, um, folks can continue to row until age 99 or whatever, and they pay a fee. Um, and it's open to anyone in the greater Fall River area. We do try to focus on our youth programs in uh, Fall River proper, if you will, uh, but it is open to greater Fall River. So our youth um, from grades 6 through 12, um, can take advantage of learn to row programs, competitive and recreational programs, and we just added a STEM to Stern program, uh, which is sort of a national partner that brings in STEM components into the sport of rowing. Uh, we also have Freedom Rows, which is um, a program that we have just adopted, or just adopted us, uh, to provide rowing for uh, military veterans. And we are partnering with the Para Rowing Foundation to provide um, accessibility for athletes of all abilities. So thus, uh, the ask for the docks. Um, generally speaking, newer docks are low profile. They're handicap accessible. Um, they allow for um, rowers of all, all abilities, um, all levels, to take advantage of rowing on the water. We do have some boats that are adaptive now. Mm -hmm. um, so amputees, for example, um, you know, athletes that have different differing abilities are able to get out on the water. Okay. Uh, now, who? Uh, now, the permission there you have from the city. Uh, you have a letter in here. I don't know that we have a letter yet. Wouldn't Paul, do you? 
we have. Okay. Not yet. Okay. We'll uh, so that. part of that is probably the feasibility study of 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 that, and then an official letter. Um, okay. And I don't know if you would have to go in front of any other for uh, since you're putting uh, on the water the conservation board or, or planning if you have to go for that for the licenses or any permitting. Does the board have any questions? Okay. It's eligible. So this would fall under uh, recreation for 200000 for the Wichita Rolling Center. Do I have a motion to move it on to the next round? I'll make a motion to move it forward. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a first and a second. Uh, roll call vote. Chris? Yes. Caroline? Yes. Jason? Yes. Vic? Vic? Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes? Rich, yes. Okay. All right. See you. Thank you. If you have any questions, give us a holler if you need any help. Absolutely. We'll do. Thank, Thank you. you. Next is the uh, Adirondack Farm and Bioreserve Discovery Center. Uh, it's no, North Burial Ground. Uh, yeah, North, yeah, North Burial Ground. Mm -hmm. Oh, city. yeah, yep. <clears throat> Let's see. Confuse your Watapas. Yeah. North Burial Ground. Okay. So, uh, is anyone here for that? Okay, I think it's she was. Simple. So, yeah. It's under Historic Preservation. This is the finish off the gate and masonry uh, uh, restoration that's around the building uh, on North Main Street for 93000 Uh They finished the building last year. So this would finish that project down there. Uh, does the board have any questions, any comments? Nope. Uh, the gates will be no. restored, refinished, and new painted and finished when they're done. Um, so uh, can I have a motion yeah, to... Uh, question. Question? Picture. I can't really ask. Yeah, so, um, I mean, it doesn't really pertain to this project, but... Um, I mean, I know the city's, you know, asking for more funding, but this, this projects that we already have approved, that had nothing that's happened, like central fire, you know. Well, that's so. gone out the bid. Oh, that's finally going out. That's okay. gone out it's, the bid. Yeah. Oh, okay. And everything is in the works. And not um, just that, and the other projects too. Everything yeah. else. Nope. Everything is uh, okay. moving along. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this would wrap up that project, finishing the gates. Okay. Um, so can we move the gates on uh, historic preservation for ninety three thousand? And its previous phases were completed too. Yeah. Okay. As well. Yeah. If you it's down on North Main Street, beautiful the way they did it. Uh, motion. I'll make a motion to uh, move it to the next round. Second. I'll second. All right. Roll call vote. Uh, Chris. Yes. Caroline. Yes. Jason. Yes. Vic. Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes? Uh, yes. All righty. Okay. North Wetupa uh, Pond, uh, Seawall, Mr. Furlan. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, Paul Furlan, the Administrator of Community Utilities. Michael Bossier, the Forester and Project Manager from the Wetumpa Reservation. So, I know there's a study for your, because I think it's back again from last year. Yes. So. Yeah, so this is a study of the uh, seawalls that are on the North Wetumpa Pond, surrounding in particular areas of the North Wetumpa Pond. Uh, there are seawalls that, uh, that were, were constructed. Uh, to originally absorb and dissipate some of the wind and wave energy, uh, stop erosion, uh, protect the drinking water supply, uh, but then they also protect the shoreline around them. Mm -hmm. um, the location of these were provided in a map within the packet. Uh, there are some down t next to the Narrows Causeway, which is off the side of 195. Uh, there are some around the 1873 Waterworks Complex. Uh, there are some on the Interlogging uh, Causeway, which crosses from uh, it, it's actually a continuation of the old New Boston Road. 
And then there's also some up on the Wilson Road Causeway that crosses the uh, upper section of the Northwood Tupper Pond. What we're looking to do is do a uh, conditions assessment and a restoration plan. So again, these seawalls have been in place for a number of years. What we'd like to do is do a full evaluation of them all the way around the pond, uh, be able to get a, uh, a ranked consistency of the condition of them around the pond, and then also uh, put together a plan to be able to restore them in future years moving forward. Anything to add on that? Um, I think the only thing I would add is that <clears throat> they are historic in nature. They're made of former granite, you know, uh, quarry from the local granite um, quarries. And, um, you know, in many respects, um, you know, they, they um, you know, it, there's an aesthetic to them that, that um, matches um, some of the other civic buildings on, on, on Bedford Street that are part of the waterworks. Uh, does the board have any questions? I, I know uh, we're not big on doing studies. I mean, I'd rather have you do the study and come back and ask us for money to, for the seawall. Uh, I mean, 82 doesn't sound like a lot of money, but when, you know, we're, we're using taxpayers' money to, to do this, where I think it goes somewhere else better. And if you could fit this in your budget, it'd be a lot easier. Uh, but it does fall under historic preservation. Uh, does the board have, want to make a motion? I had a question. Um, so, Mr. Fallon, so if, say, if this project does get approved and it goes through the whole feasibility study, to John's point, so when, when will the city, is there like um, a time frame once the feasibility study is done? Um, is, to, to move forward with the project, or is just kind of just kind of seeing first what the feasibility study shows. Yeah, so it's like like any project um, of this magnitude, the feasibility study will have to be evaluate what the conditions are because you know one area of the wall may may need uh, you know uh, total replacement, one area may need uh, repointing. What we really need to do is get an expert in there uh, to evaluate the different conditions right. and come up with an estimate. Um, the hope from there moving forward would be able to find uh, the grant funding either through uh, Mass Historical, uh, MVP, or different types of uh, you know watershed protection grants, or potentially the CPC to be able to move forward with restoration. Okay. So, all right. So if it won't be city funded, it'll just be through grants or through like. Yeah, currently within the water department budget, there is no budget to uh, to do this. Uh, also, there isn't any approved authorizations from the city council to move forward with any of this construction work. Okay, so all right, so if we go through with this, and let's say you know, depending upon what obviously what the amount would be, you know, the, it will be funded. It won't be funded through the city. It will be funded through the CPC, or if there is grants out there. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm not saying that the city won't uh, contribute to anything, but uh, you know, I'm a big proponent of looking for grant funding uh, yeah. for any projects. You know, there is a number of uh, municipal vulnerability because uh, this uh, protects our, uh, our drinking water supply. Yeah. So municipal vulnerability preparedness may be an option. Um, flood mitigation and protection may be another uh, grant opportunity. Uh, I'm a big proponent of trying to search out all the grants that are possible for, for different projects rather than going to our, our uh, rate payers. No, hey, I'm a public service. I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. So uh, what is the board's wish? Make the motion to move on or? I'll make a motion to move the seawall uh, project forward to study. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second that. Okay, roll call vote. Chris? Another question? Yeah, I do. Oh. Are you moving it forward under historic preservation or open space recreation or both? Uh, that is a good question. I would probably put it under both. both. Yeah. Is it really recreation, though? I, I would say uh, preservation. No, open space, I would say, but not it's recreation. It's historic preservation because the walls are historic. So in the past, we've... We've already deemed that it was that it qualified under historic preservation. Yeah. Yeah. I would do, my motion would be for historic preservation. Okay. So just make it for historic preservation. 
And then Richard, do you second, second that? Yeah, I yeah, have to second that, yeah. Sorry about that. So roll call vote. Chris? Yes. Caroline? Yes. Jason? Yes. Vic? Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes? Rich, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Move on to the next one. Uh, Anna Rodnack Farm Bioreserve Discovery Center. Um, this is a uh, open space recreation historic preservation. Uh, this is for the acquisition. So, yes, yeah, so this is two parts. Uh, a portion of the funding would be used for acquisition and a portion of the funding would be used for historic preservation of the structures on site. Uh, so the 415, six, six, five, six, five, eight would be the purchase price. Is that how's that break down? No, oh, so if you want, um, you know, th this project's a very exciting project for us. It's something uh, that the bioreserve has been looking at for uh, years and years, and the 20 years that it's been in place, we've been looking for a uh, bioreserve uh, discovery center. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, we had Roger Williams University come in and look at a, a number of different sites throughout the bioreserve and adjacent areas uh, that could potentially be used as a, uh, a uh, discovery center. This uh, particular property was identified as one of those. Um, Roger Williams University also went as far as uh, uh, doing up some preliminary ideas for reuse of, of the structures on site. Uh, in the area. So this is right in the entrance to the bioreserve as you're coming down Blossom Road. Um, it's uh, just before some of the water um, property that's owned uh, and then it, you'll, you're able to go right in. Uh, so just to answer your question on the funding, the overall purchase of the property, uh, $820,000. Um, you know, this, this project was in front of the CPC in the past and um, we've been here before one thing that we always hear from you is trying to use your money and leverage other funding as well um, you know so we were able to uh, to get other grant funding sources so it wasn't solely uh, burdened on the CPC for uh, the purchase of this uh, like we have asked for in the past uh, we uh, have been issued a uh, land grant from the EOEEA to uh, purchase a uh, portion of the land in the back half of seven acres because um, they're uh, in relation to open space that's what that grant is in relation to uh, so that can be applied to seven acres in the rear of the property um, ARPA funding Bristol County ARPA uh, has also uh, through the Bristol County Treasury has also approved a uh, portion of funding for uh, the purchase as well as a, a large portion for the reuse of the property um, our overall project is uh, estimated at $2 million uh, that's explained out there. Again, that would be the purchase of the property. Um, and uh, the CPC funds that would be used for the purchase of the property would be $215,658. Uh, that would go towards the purchase of the property um, expected to. And then we would expect to use $200,000 uh, towards the uh, adaptation and uh, the uh, preservation of the structures on site uh, to adapt the facility to be used as a visited center, higher reserve discovery center. Sounds, sounds good. Um, two questions. I'm sorry, Dan. I was going to say this, this, this is a good project. I, now, is this going to be uh, open all the time, or is this going to be weekends, or? So that's something we're still working with, um, you know, uh, the other partners that we have within the bioreserve, like I'm stealing a lot of things no, that you would say. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take I'll take a whack at that. So so um, we do have other partners in the bioreserve. We have uh, two state partners, the Mass Wildlife and the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Then we also have the Trustees of Reservations. And um, so, uh, but how how the how the center will be staffed is still is still you know being worked out in terms of will we have a partnership with the school department which would be you know which would make a lot of sense um, and so between a combination sort of a hybrid staffing situation with, with um, perhaps water department one of the bioreserve partners and the school department that has not that has yet to be you know sort of worked out yeah and some of our other partners too that we've uh, worked with out there um, <coughs> being Oto Bond Society and trustees are two other partners that do have uh, facilities like this around staff uh, facilities and stuff like that. So that's something we're going to be trying to work with them, see what we can bring into Fall River. Mm. 
Okay, sounds good. I'm um, just just uh, just. Can do you have a breakdown of what the uh, other funding sources you said EO EEA, and then the opera? Yep. So the EO EEA land grant, um, which was awarded, uh, the announcement came out um, September 21st uh, of that award. Uh, that was two hundred and sixty-seven thousand. Eight hundred and forty-two dollars, uh, and that's solely for the land purchase. Uh, for the land purchase, three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars is coming from uh, the Bristol County ARPA funds, and then for construction and uh, adaption of the visitor centers, we also have an additional one million dollars from the Bristol County ARPA funds. So a million dollars. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's from the Bristol County Opera Funds, and that's for, uh, you know, the repurposing of the facility to bring it into a uh, visitor center, a reserve discovery center. So the construction put on the site. Yeah. That was it for me. Thank you. Any other questions? Good project. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, this is yeah. an exciting one. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. Yeah. It's a good one when everyone gets in it and it's not so... Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not solely on CPC, you know. Yeah. Leveraging the funds that you guys provide us. You said it. You uh, get the grants. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate the uh, the multi-directional yeah, yeah. approach. And if you could just include that in the the proposal too in the next round, that'd yeah, be just useful just yeah. to just tell the community. Yep, without a doubt. All right. So can I have a motion to move this on to the next round under uh, open space recreation and historic preservation? I'll make a motion. Second. A second. Okay, roll call vote, Chris? Yes. Caroline? Yes. Uh, Jason? Yes. Vic? Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes? Rich, yes. All right, so thank, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, very thank you gentlemen. Thank you all. Have a good night. You too. You Take too. care. Thank you. Next up is the Cultural Center Historic Preservation. And community housing, uh, restoration housing, South Main Street, five hundred thousand. How would Hi. I? Can you uh, just state your name? And Manuel Mon, also known as Mark Dennis. Uh, I purchased the cultural center uh, last year um, in, in March. I, I didn't realize how big a building that was. <laughs> I just fell in love with the hall, which is probably the most beautiful hall I've seen around here. Uh, and um, so I bought it, and I had got a good deal on it, but there was a lot that needed work on. Uh, like there was, I, after I found out that there was some ceiling, uh, some roof, uh, that needed help and that water did some damage to the uh, beautiful designs that the, the hall has. I myself am kind of handy so I patched some of the stuff but it really needs a professional to really do it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, it has 10, 15 foot feet windows, very tall windows. Uh, and the, all the wood is rotting away. Uh, it's some place you can put your fingers through because the glass dropped down. And so I went out, and, and also another problem is that because those holes in the window, uh, when we have a function, if a band or a DJ's playing, if you come outside, it's noisy. You can really hear uh, the music. And I was worried about right next door, there's an old folks home. So uh, I'm always worried about waking them up at 12 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So I never knew that this kind of help was around. So I went up and I bought some scaffolding and I was gonna, and cement blocks, and I was just gonna block, at least on the north side next to the old folks home, I was gonna block it with cement and so the noise wouldn't come and the elements wouldn't finish off the rest of the windows and I'll 
patch up in, inside as well as I could. Uh, but someone told me, oh, you can probably get some help for these windows. So I stopped. The scaffolding is up. But if I can get some help on getting those windows, uh, I won't cement them. If not, i got to do what i got to do. Um, <clears throat> also, the, uh, that building is a huge building, and the only source of income it has is the restaurant, the hall, and a... Um, a travel agency that rents the, on the on the side of the street, and it's going to be very hard to, to keep up such a beautiful building with the with the money that a restaurant makes. And I mean, I'll do my best. Uh, but so I thought maybe the second floor. There's a lot of space, and it's not used at all. We don't have an air, uh, an elevator. Therefore, some businesses try to go up there, and uh, the inspector says you can't have a business here unless there's a, uh, wheel, a wheelchair access. So we don't have that. Yeah, but I, so I thought maybe if we could do some apartments up there, that would be more income, and therefore we could keep the building historical as it's been through the years. Uh, so any help you guys can, I appreciate it. If not, I'll do the best I can with what I got. Yeah. Uh, Chris, is this building on the uh, historical... Uh... Oh, yeah. Yes? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it definitely qualifies okay. as a historic building. Oh, it's beautiful. It's yeah, be a shame yeah. to, to let it go down. Well, the inside, we can't help you with that. Um, it's kind of historical. It, I, I know, but... Have you ever been inside? you got to go inside. Yeah, I've been, yeah, I've been, yeah, plenty of times. Uh, He's applying for community housing, too. Yeah, and I don't know about the community housing, because we'd have to have plans how it's going to be when you come. I don't know if that's something you can put together and well, I, I funding spoke, round starts in I've January. I've spoke with, a, uh, with an architect, but he wants $19,000 right up front. Uh, so I'm trying to look at one that can draw the plans a little bit more reasonable, and then I have to go before the board and, yeah. and get... Uh, at my point, I mean, the window restoration, uh, that looks like something you could put in for. Um, yeah, it'd be great to have some soundproof windows there. Yeah. They don't open. Well, they'd have to be, meet the Secretary of Standards. It couldn't be, you know, uh, whatever they suggest is what we, we put in. Uh, and it's the, just it's the Secretary of Interior Standards for Historic Preservation. You can find like the whole guidelines online yeah. through the, the National Park Service's website. Yeah. Just okay. uh, does the board have any questions? Uh, I do. So um, I just have. A, I guess I'm just a, a little confused. So, you just, you, is this for funding for affordable apartments, based on what what the application says? I mean, the purpose of this, this project isn't just as restore Fall River Cultural Formerly Baptist Temple. Um, so the project calls out for updates, just all windows, keep the neoclassic um, fire sprinkler system, and then basement top level, and rehab the upper level to make affordable apartments. So is it just for affordable apartments? Is it, uh, is it, is it gonna be, is there gonna be accessibility for the public or? Yes, first I would like uh, to do the windows, and then I'm working on getting approved for uh, uh, cheap housing, affordable housing, and uh, just that little bit more would help keep up the building, mm -hmm. because it's, it's, a, it's a huge building to keep up. I didn't realize till I got there. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, but I'm, I'm, I guess I'm still a little lost. So, um, 
I mean, I'm, I don't know nothing about the cultural club, and I apologize. No. Um, so is there, like, what kind of accessibilities will the public have? Oh, we have weddings and shows. Oh, venues. And, oh, okay. Yeah, there's a, bit, a huge hall for events. Okay, gotcha. No. Thank you. Right now, I think the only thing we've got could possibly do is uh, the windows. Does the board have any comments, suggestions? Chris? So I, I think it just seems kind of all over the place. Yeah. And there really is not any clear definition of what's going to be done, where the figures for all of this come from. Um, the real plan for for what's going to happen. There's no architect involved, mm. so um, I'm just kind of having a hard time seeing how this would work. I mean, it, we really can't fund it for community housing when there's no actual plan and it hasn't been even um, approved for community housing. Um, recreation, I don't believe that would fall into the recreation category because it's not the same kind of recreation that. Um, it, he's talking about it's not um, for like, you know, wedding kind of recreation things. Historic preservation, it would qualify if you're talking about the windows, but then the, it's going to have to be historically accurate. It's going to have to be two Secretary of Interior standards as well as anything else that gets done to the outside of the building afterwards. Because there's going to be a deed restriction on the building. And it's all going to have to meet Secretary of Interior standards. So I, I just kind of feel like there's not really enough information for us to go on. It's kind of like a, 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 a thought of, you know, there's this idea of what I want to do, but, it, you know, there's no real detail. And so I'm kind of having a hard time with that. Well, so. Um on the windows, is there any question on it? It's outside. Well, it's, well, the thing is, we need more information on it. Um, I, I think it is just an application that's all over. Uh, I think if you, I would be suggesting that uh, you bring this back next year and have a little more detailed of what housing or what you want to aim for and a little more detail for us to look at. Because you have five hundred thousand, and we get, we're hopping all over the place, and uh, I don't well, know. The five hundred thousand is considering all that I'm going to do, but if you can't uh, I'll take the, the the windows for whatever they cost to make, okay, you know. Yeah. So, uh, so my my recommendation would be um, so you can solicit quotes from an architect. Um, and they can provide you a quote. That doesn't mean you have to go with that firm. And that's that point in time when you when you solicit a quote. Basically, they like I explained to the other um, the other folks from the other project that you can you can do this in phases, right? So working with a professional, they'll be able to write up the scope of work for you and say, okay, this is how much it can cost. We can do these types of phases. This is what our fee would be. And you can come back to the board and say, hey, I have you know an architect. This is the scope of work. This is it, the initial cost of what's going to be because for, forecasting is, is very difficult. I mean, we're, we're in a volatile market now that everything changes, right? Like I can get a quote today and two hours from now it can change or by or 24 hours it can change. So it's just a recommendation that I think will be be helpful for, for yourself to be able to do that. You don't have to. Uh, like I said, I did go to one architect and he says, to go in there, measure everything, and just start. It doesn't mean that you're going to get approved, and they want nine, nine, $19,000 right away to me. Well, that sounds I like think. you need to get another architect. So I, I would recommend you shop around yeah. and, and try um, other architects, because they, so they can provide you with a quote. Now, the quote is not going to outline the scope of work until they until they it gets until you pay them basically but they can say hey this this will cost this firm will charge you i'm going to say ten thousand right for this for to write up the scope of work 
at least you can come back to the board and say, hey, you know, and they can maybe help you out and give you some kind of figure as a, you know, we can do a phase one that, you know, forecast and it can be not a, it won't be an, an actual figure, but a forecast amount. So just a recommendation. Because you have a, a hundred thousand for windows. Who, did you get a bid for that? Or is... I, I didn't have, like, I didn't have time to get bids because when I found out about the possibility of getting help, yeah. I was already starting to, mm -hmm. to first cement the bricks and then and I stopped yeah. and uh, so I just filled in the papers as, as best as I could yeah yeah and um, yeah um, yeah see it makes it hard on our part to because uh, I don't know if a hundred thousand is close Near or what? Uh, um, but I'll leave it up the board. So I would just say, uh, so I agree with some of the comments made by uh, my fellow committee members. Um, perhaps the community housing portion of this application isn't quite ready. Uh, maybe as in the future as you come up with the plans for the second floor and, and we have more substance to go on with that, you could reapply. Uh, for community housing in regards to like I think it was the sprinklers and if, I, if the elevator was included um, regarding the windows with historic preservation this is just the eligibility round he actually filled out the full application no, which isn't yeah. due yet so that's where you would really be answering a lot of you would have to answer a lot of the funding questions right. so since this is the eligibility round um, we have the owner here who, you know, he literally stopped from cementing the windows because <laughs> yeah. he thought that there was, you know, a way that he can uh, possibly do about this in a way more appropriate for the community that the community would want. Um, he, uh, I would think that the windows are eligible as long as you recognize and understand that they have to meet Secretary of Interior standards. I heard you wanted to make them soundproof. That might be the tricky part for you. Um, finding historically accurate windows that would be soundproof. Um, so I would say I would vote to make to move the historic uh, preservation aspect of the windows forward and give you time to you know solicit architects uh, with that in mind. Say it has to be Secretary of Interior standards for these windows. You're looking for them to be soundproof, and you just need to get a couple figures out for the the funding round, and then we kind of take it from there. But and then you just kind of work on the community housing when you have those plans a little bit more solidified. And on the windows, you have till January to get the three bids and all that in your estimates. So I need three three estimates of what it's going to Best to, to get three estimates, yeah. Okay. And, uh, so do we want to make a motion to uh, for window uh, windows for historic preservation? Uh, we can say a hundred thousand, but it's just eligibility, so that can fluctuate. Uh, yeah, and just so you're aware, this would come with the preservation deed restriction, as Kristen mentioned, where there would be other restrictions if you got this grant for the windows on, like what you did to the exterior of the property. They would often have to go to the Historic Commission for maybe guidance if you're a little questionable on some future work. But just so you're, you're clear and you don't put in the work if you don't, you don't want to accept the preservation deed restriction, because we've had that happen. <laughs> oh. Thank you very much. Okay, well, uh, does anyone want to make a motion for that? I'll make a motion to move the windows portion of the application forward under historic preservation. Okay, uh, second? I'll second that. All righty. Uh, roll call vote. Chris? Yes. Caroline? Yes. Jason? Yes. Vic? Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes. Rich, yes. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And, and if you do need any guidance on it, just give us a call. Yeah, and that's a lot of, there's a lot of information on our website, too. If you go on there, everything's listed. John, the other thing, too, is um, I, I think it would be a good idea for you to, I mean, you'll need to be in touch with the Historical Commission anyway to get a letter of support. But I think that the Historical Commission can also offer some guidance as to how you can um, move forward with this as well. That's, that's where, kind where, of what they're there for. So. Kristen's actually oh, on the commi uh, committee. Where's, where are they at? Are they in the city hall? So they're in city, so in city hall, 
the office, um, the, the, the clerk for the historical commission is on the fifth floor. I can't think offhand what um, it is, but it's it's on the same floor as the building department. It's just when you get off the elevators, you go to the right. It's where licensing is, and it's it's the same office there. And you can speak with the clerk there, and she can put you in touch with the chair of the commission. And um, I know they meet the third Tuesday of every month. They have a meeting as well. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, the other parts, the, the uh, housing parts, that's out. That's so, out, yeah. Uh, yep, for this year. This year. Next year, you know, if you're into that, uh, maybe stop in and see uh, Mike Dion from CDA. He can help you in the right direction because affordable housing is something Fall River is looking for, so it would be a nice addition. But you, it's uh, it's a big undertaking so yeah. generally with the community housing projects they come to us with the plans already in development and in the long way you know they might have got historic tax credits and so forth and they're looking for some kind of relief and the the um, elevator parts uh, no. I'm not, I'm not that would be under community housing when yeah. you have those plans the further yeah. further developed thank you, thank you. all righty uh, next uh, maritime museum uh, historic preservation, AVAC system, uh, plan, plan for AVAC system, study. Hello. How are you doing? Water Street, uh, Good, forever, 91,000. Yes, hi, uh, Megan Rathman. I am the executive director at Battleship Cove and the Fall River Maritime Museum. Um, so we are a non-profit 5013C3 museum, um, both the Maritime and Battleship Cove. We merged in 2015, I believe it was, 2015? Yeah. Um, so we are asking for funding to complete phase three of this HVAC project, um, which you are all very familiar with. Um, phases one was to create the engineering drawings for the electrical upgrades needed for this. Phase two was the electrical upgrades, which are almost complete. We are just a victim of supply chain issues right now, where we're waiting on one part, and we've been waiting on one part for so long. That's the, that's uh, the world. <laughs> it's just, we're all waiting. We're all just like sitting there going, it's all ready to go. We just need this one part. And we have a letter in our application from our current contractors stating that they're, they're just waiting on the part. Um, and then the, that phase two will be completed. And then this is phase three, which will be to create the engineering drawings of the HVAC system itself so that we can then take those and this also includes the construction drawings. Once that's phase three is done, that's when we can actually take the project to bid to build said HVAC system and install it into the Maritime Museum. Currently the Maritime Museum only has heat, it does not have air conditioning and that is a big problem for both the building, it is a historic mill, it's part of the American Printing Company, mm -hmm. it's from the late 1800s down on Water Street, it's a beautiful building. Um, so the lack of air conditioning is detrimental to the building in the summer. It gets very warm in there and it is slowly causing issues to the building itself. Um, it also houses the museum and a very large collection of artifacts directly related to Fall River's maritime history, the Fall River Line, um, the whaling industry, the textile industry, and the heat in the summer is also directly impacting all of those artifacts as well as the two libraries upstairs which contain a vast amount of documents to Fall River's history. So getting an HVAC system in there will allow us to climate control both the collection, the building, and the exhibits and preserve that history for everyone in Fall River. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we do allow public access as we are a museum. We also allow public to rent um, the Maritime if they want for private events. And this year Battleship Cove and the Maritime Museum became members of Museums for All which is a program that is nationwide specifically looking at making museums accessible for anyone regardless of economic background. So anyone who has um, any sort of SNAP benefits can come for a very reduced admission to the museum. Among, all they have to do is bring a presentation of their EBT card and an ID and we allow discounted admission to make sure that everyone has access to their history in Fall River. Any questions? Sorry, that was a lot. <laughs> kind of no, no, there. Now, I, I know you, you, you guys constantly got something down there, you're either rehabbing or fixing. But now, like on, when it comes to studies, have you looked into like any other grants? We have, and this that? isn't a study, this is just actually making the drawings. Yeah. Um, rather than doing a study, we, we know we can 
do it is feasible, which means we need the engineer to draw the actual technical side of it. Um, and we are looking into grants. Once we have the engineering drawings, we can go for some federal grants that are specifically designed to help museums put in HVAC systems. Um, and there's a lot of grant work in the federal grant system once you have the drawings to help museums become sustainable in terms of, um, it's gone out of my word, out of my brain, um, for energy efficiency, yeah. specifically looking at you know a modern HVAC system that helps us with energy bills, looking at solar, things like that to really help museums deal with climate change. So there's a lot of funding there once we get through this phase of the project. Okay, so this would help you get to getting funding from the federal government for the, yeah. so you wouldn't be looking to come back for the you know, phase here? four. I, I can't say for certain because I don't know what will happen in the next year. We know what funding will we will get versus we won't. I, I, I unfortunately right. can't say. Um, but I am looking to apply for a lot of federal grant for this project because I know that the HVAC part of this project will be incredibly expensive, uh, more so than the previous phases have been because it is a large mill building. Um, so we will have to, to. And you really can't get any idea on funding till you. Get did the done. drawings where we, we that's the issue so the the architectural the the quote we have from our architect which is what we're submitting for includes creating the engineering drawings creating the construction drawings and then um, one help a uh, little bit to help us with the bid process when we get to that stage and then it includes all of that so that we can go in um, and really make sure we get really good bids for this project because it will be such a big project to put a whole HVAC system in a historic mill from the 1800s so yeah. um, I got a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, so, is have you been working with this company? I mean, I, obviously, I'm, I'm new to the board. I know there's just there's different phases. Um, just look at some of the fees. It's just it's gone up um, since the last time we've applied. You know, I got I sought quotes from. You know, we've come for this project quite a bit, and we've worked with these architects before, and so I sought quotes to update because. Everything has gone so much. No, right. There. So I guess my question is, have you solicited quotes from other architects, or is this just the folks that you guys are just going with? This is the ones, they've already worked on the project, so they're familiar with it. But um, I'm also happy to solicit more quotes for the next phase, like for the January submission date, if that would be beneficial. I, I, I for me, I mean, I, I honestly. It I mean, is I, nice to see. <laughs> see other, other quotes. I just, I just think, honestly, I think their fee is just astronomical. I mean, it's, it. Yeah, I mean, we like to see three quotes, but two, I mean, it is an architect, mm -hmm. and so you do have your mm -hmm. preferences, who you like. Oh, no, I'm happy to get multiple quotes. Okay, that would be Yeah, that'll, that'll, I mm -hmm. think it will, just for yourself, just in general, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's great because, um, you know, it's just, when you work with one firm, although it's, it's good because they, they've worked on the project, they understand the project, at the same time, you know, you just, you're not sure exactly kind of what, a better pricing you can get out there so yes. I think it's I think it will be helpful just to just just mm -hmm. just to see you of course and I'm more than happy to do that for the yeah that'd be great thank you submit three quotes for that oh, yeah good. thank you mm -hmm. appreciate that any other questions up for the board Alex? okay so can I have a motion to move this on to a historic um, preservation for 91,000 I'll make a motion to move it forward under uh, the historic preservation. Uh, uh, second? I'll second it. Okay. Roll call vote. Christine? Chris? Yes. Caroline? Yes. Jason? Yes. Vic? Yes. Alex? Yes. John? Yes. Rich? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, man. Have a great day. Have a good evening. <laughs> Let's try good time and we're going here for Art Association. Um, looks like uh, next up is the Art Association. Um, they're applying again this year for um, under historic preservation for 30 original wood windows. Belmont Street, 265,000. Uh, Donna Barnes, uh, last year we okayed them for their porch roof and uh, a couple other things. Uh, board have any questions? Is John here for them? John, are you here for the uh, Art Association? John Kokoska? 
Yes, I can. Uh... Craig, could you nudge uh, John if he's uh, here for us? I did have a question. Is anyone in the audience there for the um, no. Art Association? No, it's just us. John, are you there? For the Greater Fall River Art Association. John, are you are you there? I don't even recognize that name as being associated with the art association from the, the people that have been before us in the past. Okay. Can we mute uh, that that person? I think it's Chris. Chris, oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, well, I guess Perfect. John's not here for us. Good, did you have the. Uh, I just had a question. Uh, uh, well, just for the public to know what the project is. Um, the scope of work for the Greater Fall, Greater Fall River Art Association asking for $265,000. Scope work includes renovation and restoration of 30 wood windows. Um, work shall include, but not limited to, the restoration of the windows, including painting. I was just wondering uh, about the cost. It seems a little high for 30 windows, 265,000, especially if we're kind of going off of the Fall River Admin Building. I think it's Vic. Vic, can you mute the... He right, looks frozen, thank you. Um, it just looked like it was a little higher, so I was wondering where they got that cost estimate from, and I was gonna reiterate three cost estimates for the uh, the next one. As I'm sure you would, Richard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, I would. When we send out a Did Sandy, they, when we send out a oh, letter to maybe uh, hold on. I think everyone got lost on Zoom. When we send out a letter for them to go on to the next round, can we highlight three bids? And all the quotes, yeah. The technical. Quotes. Yeah. So when it comes to so when it comes to private projects, I'll, I'll do that. yeah, they don't. It's not required by law, but I think although it's not required, I think we should recommend. Well, we it is listed in our requirements. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Oh. There we go. There we are. There it is. Okay. Yeah. But a lot of them don't. Right. You know. Okay. So we're all set on that. We need to take a vote. Uh, well, yeah, I think they, we lost them. They, so they just lost. So we were. It's just. Um, in the requirements, we were asking for three cost uh, cost estimates as well. So reiterating that in the letter um, going forward to provide three cost estimates. I mean, just because uh, Farver admin school administration building, I think they said they were doing seventy windows for two hundred sixty thousand. This is thirty yeah. for two sixty five. So yeah. just I know they said wooden windows. So just to see where they get those numbers from and make yeah. sure that they're uh, sure all they're worth. Yep, yeah. and and that uh, historic preservation applications need to go to uh, get a letter from the historic commission. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so can we make a motion for the uh, Greater Fall River Association to go under historic preservation for the next round for thirty windows for estimate two sixty five? Yeah, I'd make a, a motion that uh, move forward is eligible the Greater Fall River Art Association project. Okay. Second that. Okay, roll call vote. Caroline? Yes. Chris? Chris, yes? Oh, yes. Uh, Jason? Yes. Vic? Yes. Alex? Yes. John, yes? Rich, yes. Okay. And as stated, we're going to, when we send out the letters for them to uh, move on to the next round, we're going to highlight like three bids. Uh, Secretary of State of Standards, checking with the Historic Commission. We'll just highlight some of the key areas. That way we won't run into problems come January when they submit. Yep. Um, Sounds good. Let's see. Uh, okay, that's uh, no old business. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call vote. Caroline? Yes. Uh, Chris? Yes. Jason? Yes. Vic? 
Yes. Out? Yes. John, yes. Rich, yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thank you.